Look to our precious Jesus today who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. During a recent Monday night service, Pastor Benny Hinn introduced Dick Bernal from Jubilee Christian Center in San Jose, California, to share a message which will have a profound effect on your faith for divine favor and total restoration. The Lord has given Pastor Bernal an anointing that's going to bring restoration to you. I promise you, Everything the devil has taken from you is coming back. Yeah. Lift your hands and thank him. It's coming back. And, and everything, not just financial things, coming back. Pastor Burnell was given a prophecy by Oral Roberts, powerful prophecy. And as a result... Things have been happening with, through him, and proven themselves over quite a time now, a few years. I was so moved when I heard him. I said, please lay hands on me tonight. And pastor, I, I don't say this lightly because I recognize the anointing. I felt something shoot right through me when you laid hands on me. And God truly is already opening doors. It's just really remarkable what is, God has done through you. The favor, the favor that he can release on people is unbelievable. A scripture and the story I'm about to tell you really culminated a few miles away from here in a golf course right down the street with Oral Roberts, my friend Larry Lee, and a businessman. And since 1995, about 21 years now, I've been preaching this one little scripture all over the world. Dr. Cho's church, biggest church in Europe, biggest churches in Europe, all over America. This scripture right here. Elijah said to Ahab, go eat and drink, for there is the sound of abundance that's coming. And that's the word for us tonight. I hear a sound. Say it with me. I hear a sound. Look at your neighbor. Say, I hear a sound. And the sound I hear is a sound of wild, crazy, unbelievable abundance that's coming to the people of God. On the day of Pentecost, what happened? They heard a sound. Then what happened? They saw something. Then what happened? They said something. Then what happened? They went out in the street and told everybody. But they first heard something. They heard the sound of God. Sounded like a mighty rushing wind. I'm going to tell you about three men. I'm going to tell you a story about a man named Story. His name is Carl Story. I buried him about four years ago. I'm going to tell you about another friend named Jimmy Swaggart and a father named Oral Roberts. I was preaching in a a little church in the city of Dinuba. Anybody know where Dinuba is? Right up, <laughs> one person, two people, right up 99. It's a little low. You don't blink, you'll go right by it. Now, I went back to my little Motel 8. You ever been to Motel 8? It's like, it's like a notch above Motel 6. You got 6, 7, and 8. <laughs> and I turned on the TV. I was actually looking for some sports, you know, just... Like when we preach, we get, we, it's hard to go to sleep because the anointing's on you and, and you and your mind is you know, kind of rehearsing the whole night or day. And I'm, I'm turning on, and I, I saw on CNN that this great preacher had fallen from grace and had made a mistake. Not come from the Word of Faith camp. Carl and I went to Rama. We were mentored by Brother Hagen and Brother Copeland way, way back in the day. So I didn't have a lot of Assembly of God friends, if you will. Nothing against them. I just didn't know. It just wasn't my tribe. I'd never met Jimmy Swaggart. I didn't, I didn't even know if I liked him, to tell you the truth. And it's like a hand, Pastor Benny, it's like a hand shoved me on the ground, and I started praying and crying for a man I never met, never really thought about. He was big back in the day. He was huge. And I felt the Lord say, call him. 
I said, well, how am I going to call him? I remembered Steve Muncie, our friend Steve Muncie, somehow had a connection. So I called Steve. I said, Steve, this may sound crazy, but do you have Brother Swaggart's phone number? And he said, well, actually, I do. I said, give it to me. I came home. I told my wife, Carl, I'm going to call Jimmy Swaggart. She goes, well, I'll go, in the, I'll go pray in tongues somewhere. You go ahead and call Brother Swaggart. If, if, if Jimmy and Francis are watching, they're going to they're remember this story. I owe them a lot. Well, he picked up the phone. He actually picked up the phone, that, that booming voice of his, which is unmistakable. I said, uh, Brother Jimmy? Yes. I said, uh, my name's Dick Brunel. Hey, Dick. How's Carla? How you guys doing? We really enjoy watching you on TV, and we hosted almost every Wednesday night back in the day. And I said, well, thank you. But she's fine. She's in the other room. And what can I do for you? I said, I don't know. But I wish you would get in an airplane and come out here. I just want to be your friend. I just want to pray with you. I want to take you to San Francisco and eat crab. He said, when? I said, how about next week? He said, we'll be there. He flew out. We're having dinner eating crab. The Holy Ghost came on me and said, have him preach Sunday. <clears throat> I said, what did you just say, Holy Ghost? <laughs> I mean, this news is kind of fresh. <laughs> and the Lord whispered a little bit louder, ask him to preach something. He's got a word for the church. Brother Jimmy had a big mouthful of crab, and we're just getting with it. Nice, nice restaurant in San Francisco. I said, Brother Jimmy, I, I think the Holy Spirit wants you to preach something. He, like, he put his crab down. He looked at me and said, Dick, you're in enough trouble having dinner with me. I don't want to hurt you. I said, well, it's not my idea, to be honest with you. And he says, well, if you're sure. Well, word got out. Of course, the press was there and, and a bunch of looky-loos and our people, of course. And he preached. I'll never forget. He preached a text. I believe it was 1 Corinthians 11 where Paul talked about communion, where God took the bread, broke the bread, gave the bread, and Jimmy preached on God has taken me. God is breaking me. I hope God has given me back. Wasn't a dry eye in the house. Even the news people were tearing up. Well, he said, uh, afterwards, we're in the back room, and this, this gentleman by the name of Carl Storr, a little white-haired guy, red face, pop belly, about that tall, very wealthy man from my area, Silicon Valley. And he came back there, and and Jimmy introduces me to Carl, but Carl, Carl's like shaking. He's looking at Jimmy shaking. He, didn't, he got saved watching Jimmy on TV. He'd care less about me. And, but it was, it was nice anyway, and, and everybody left. Well, about, as I shared with Pastor Benny the other night, about four or five weeks later, I see this man sitting out there every Sunday. Four or five, six. Finally, he came up. Now, Jimmy told me before he left, he goes, now, Carl gives me $1 million every year. He says he drinks like a fish, cusses like a sailor, cries during worship, and is one of the most generous people you ever meet. <laughs> Listen, I used to run the Hell's Angels. Nothing scares me. I wasn't born in a Christian home. I got saved late in life. Thank God. He said, uh... After church came up, he goes, hey, Dick. He didn't even call me pastor. Hey, Dick, uh, Dick. He goes, uh, what are you doing tomorrow? Can I, can I buy you lunch? I'm going to be in a bar. Come and get me. <laughs> Does that bother you? I said, no, sir. I went and fetched him. We went into a restaurant. He said, well, I've been coming to your church. I said, yes, sir. I, I saw you out there. He said, uh, Francis Swagger called me and said, Carl, are you going to church? No, I'm just watching. I'm watching you on TV and John Hagee and some, you know, and that's, that's my church. And she said, in prayer this morning, God said, you tell Carl story to go help Dick and Carla Burnell and help them build that church. He said, so here I am, son. What can I do for you? I laughed. I said, Mr. Story, don't ever ask a preacher what you can do for him. <laughs> we have our lists. I said, I'll tell you what, we're going to Israel in about 10 days. Why don't you go with us? He goes, only if we go first class. I said, if you're buying, I'm flying. 
We get out of the airplane. Well, Jimmy told me he drank a little bit. He didn't tell me how much. <laughs> I never seen anybody drink more Bloody Marys. Y'all know what a Bloody Mary is anyway. Don't worry, Doug, whatever. I never seen anybody drinking. I've been around. I've been around. From 18 till I got saved, I knew every bartender in San Jose, California, and drug dealer. I didn't know any preachers or church people. So I've been around a little bit. So he wasn't scaring me. But this guy, this guy, one after another, after another, after another, and and we're flying from New York, heading to Tel Aviv. And finally he goes, hey, he started calling me pastor by now. Pastor. He's yawning and getting tired. He goes, God just told me to give you a million dollars. I said, well, Carl, I said, I, I, I think I'm feeling the Lord say to receive it. I, <laughs> I'm feeling it anyway. He laughed and, he has three or four more. I can't. I said, where is this guy putting this stuff? How can you drink this much? This is crazy. And he laid the seat back and he, and he popped the seat back up. I'm thinking, thank God, I'm going to get two hours before we land of sleep. He pops the seat back up. And he goes like this. He's sitting at the aisle and sitting in the window. So I give him a high five. He goes, what are you doing? Well, I said, I thought you were like, good night, high five me. Good night. He goes, no. He goes, remember I told you I was going to give you a million dollars? That's not going to happen. Well, I had already spent that 15 times in my mind. And my heart clanked. He goes, I'm going to give you five million. Now, I'm thinking it's the vodka. The first million was the Holy Ghost. I'm thinking this. I'm thinking five millions, the Bloody Marys. Well, we land. Next day we're having breakfast. You've been on tours with Pastor Benny. You know, you have the big, big buffet and all that. And he, he's got a bag of ice and Tylenol or some kind of aspirin. Where's Dick? Where's, where's Dick? Where's Pastor Dick? Where's Pastor Dick? Somebody pointed. He come over. He goes, whoo, we had a big time last night. I thought, you did. Yeah. You had a big time. He goes, uh, Pastor, remember now. Now remember, drunk or sober, this old blue jay, his word is his bond. You'll get your five million. And he did. Now he wanted to give it to Carl and I personally, insisted on giving us the money personally, and we said, No, sir. You're gonna give it to our church and we're gonna buy a piece of land and we're gonna build a building. Pastor Benny's preached that many, many times. Beautiful church. And we needed we needed to pay off the land even to get a loan. So Maybe three weeks after we had the money in the bank, I'm playing golf about 10 minutes from here with Oral Roberts, who was a golfing buddy, a father, and a friend, a mentor, Larry Lee, a good buddy, and a businessman named Michael. And we're at the first tee, and Larry Lee said, tell Brother Oral that story. And Oral said, what story? I said, well, it's a story about a man named Story. Carl's story, and I, I shared with him pretty much the short version of what I just shared with you. He put his golf club down. He said, lay your hands on me. <laughs> now, I, wouldn't, I wasn't raised in church, but I watched Oral Roberts on black and white TV with my grandma and grandpa in Watsonville, California, where I was born, in the Monterey area. And he, to me, he was an icon. Just to meet him, just to, just to be in his presence, to play golf with a man, to, to eat with him, was like a dream come true. And for him to say, Dick, lay your hands on me. And I was reticent. I was hesitant. I was like, and, and Larry started doing this, like, put your hands on him. <laughs> and he looked up, he goes, I need $8 million, like yesterday, for our university, because we're in trouble. He said, God told me you have an anointing to release big gifts, especially one big gift that can pop you in to the next level of where God wants you to minister and to live and to be blessed. This is what he told me. So I said, well, eight million? That, that's what, yes, sir. He goes, Lay your hands on me. So I laid my hands. I was nervous. I, I, I think my, I prayed the sorriest prayer I've ever prayed. I was so nervous. Talk about stuttering. But it came out. He said, thank you. 
He gets up. He's ready to hit the ball. He, he was an excellent golfer, by the way. He's ready to hit the ball. He goes, he goes, Dick, God just told me to tell you this. Everywhere you go, every church you go to, every meeting with business people, wherever you go, lay hands on the pastor. Lay hands on the evangelist. Lay hands on the business person. But ask them what they're believing for for the next 12 months. And for 20 years I've been doing this. And I'm not going to tell you exactly the people, but some of the most famous people in the body of Christ I have prayed for. And in some cases, 24 hours, they got what they asked for. And there's things that God wants to do with you. But you got to have that breakthrough one time. Listen, that $5 million, when I went, that bank wouldn't give me the time of day. When I paid that land off and still put money in the bank, all of a sudden the banker said, Reverend, you got a $20 million line of credit just in your signature. We believe you're good for it. That one gift allowed us to build our sanctuary and double our church and have some of the greatest preachers in the world come and bless San Jose, Silicon Valley, and San Francisco. Now, this is what we're going to do. I feel, I feel it, Benny. I feel the anointing. I feel the anointing is here that some lives are going to be changed. And I know pastor wants to lay his hands, but if I could just help you, if, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, if I could just walk with you. But this is what I want you to do. I want everybody to stand up. And those of you watching online right now, this is for you. Those who are watching on Periscope, those that are watching on any of the wonderful broadcasts that are coming from Benny Hinn Ministries, don't shut us down right now. Don't turn us off. This is the best part of what's about to happen. That whole thing happened because I showed mercy to a man named Jimmy Swigert, who I love. And because of that, I invited him, I preached, I gave him an offering, I gave him an offering. And because of that, his wife tells a man to join my church. And because of that, the man falls in love with us and gives us $5 million. But as we pray for you tonight, I want you to take 30 seconds, close your eyes, and what is it you need the next 12 months. What is it you need? I'm talking finances. We got to be specific. Sometimes people don't want to be specific, but listen, you got to be specific. And, 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 and don't shortchange God. Some of you need to double your income quickly. Some, some of you need to believe for something to happen, uh, a big gift. So on the count of three, I love the number three, I want you to prophesy into the heavens what you're believing for over the next 12 months. You on television, you watching online, do the same thing. On the count of three, I want the cloud of, I want the cloud of witnesses to say, what was that? I want the angels around the throne to, like, has it, like what was that? It's a sound from earth, O holy ones, O sacred ones. It's a sound from God's people releasing their faith. Now watch, sound travels at 700, around 700 miles an hour. But if you run by faith, you can catch up to your own sound. You can catch up to your own sound. That's what happened when Chuck Yeager broke the sound barrier. He caught up. So what you're going to do is you're going to release a frequency of faith out of your mouth out of your heart that will get into the spirit into the fourth dimension but then we begin chasing it running the race by faith and then when you catch up to your own prophecy you're going to break through the barrier are you following me what's going to come out of your mouth is waves 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 of belief waves of faith Sound waves. I hear a sound. On the count of three, prophesy into your future, your children's future, your grandchildren. 
One, two, three, go! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on, let it go! Come on, let it go! Let it go! Let it go! Let it go! You at home, let it go! Let it go! strong here. I felt the anointing of God tonight so strong when Pastor Dick Burnell, and you just heard the amazing word he gave, when he was praying for the people, and I lifted my hands, and I felt the God of glory so close to me, and I cried out, Lord, everything taken from you, restore it for me and Suzanne. And I just felt like something came all over me. Yeah, I've been around you a lot. Wow, time. the glory I seen you of cry God. too often. No, but you know the glory of God hit you were me. You touched. And and you laid, Pastor Dick laid hands on me a few days ago. In San Jose, after he shared what you heard, and something just went right yeah. through me, and everything in me now knows I have it. Yes. God's gonna do it. Yes. But before you laid hands on me, there was nothing. I was struggling. Would well, it happen? Not before happen? I even told you the story, I wasn't going to tell you the story. We're, and I, the Holy Spirit said, tell Benny Hinn about your $5 million gift. Tell him. And I thought, you're, you know, you're talking to your friends. I didn't want to interrupt. And whole, tell him. So when I told you, you turned around. Oh, I said, I'm not leaving you before you lay hands on me. And then you got down and, on your knees and, and lay your because hands on me. Because my wife and I, we have, they've stolen it from us yeah. over the years. Yeah. And we need an amount back to secure our tomorrow, our future. Right, right. I'm 63. She's 57 or so. You know, we're not young. We want to secure our tomorrow and our children and grandchildren. Right. right. And when you laid hands on me, everything in me came right. alive. I felt, I, felt it, I felt it leave me. And then I saw you flinch. It, and, <laughs> and tell me, I, I felt it strong. Pastor Dick is going to pray over you right now. Yes. And he laid hands on a man named Nick that night when I was there. He was sitting next to me. He's a Greek gentleman, has restaurants in San Francisco. And please tell him what happened well, to him. It's amazing, really. By the time he got home, he texted me. He goes, Pastor Dick, you're not going to believe this, but a famous, famous winery, one of the biggest in the world, called him and offered him uh, or they want to buy this recipe, and he said it's going to cost you seven figures, and they didn't bat an eye. That was maybe two hours after I prayed for him. But that's not unusual. Uh, I've, pray, I've prayed for people that, well, I, I, I prayed for a man in, in South Africa. He left Zimbabwe. He went to, back home to Port Elizabeth, $1.2 billion con rand contract. That, and he said, he told my friend Tudor Bismarck, our friend, Get Dick back over here. He's got to pray for everybody in my church. And I haven't got there yet. But this pastors all over all over the world I have done what we did tonight. Can you pray over yes. them right now? And those listen, precious people, your pastor, you're you're Christian, you're watching, you love Jesus, you have needs, you have dreams. Nothing happens till somebody says something, somebody sows something, somebody prays something. Nothing happened until God said, and there was. Dick Bernal, Pastor Ben Hinn is saying, your blessing, your breakthrough, you're going to break the sound barrier. You're going you're to break the veil of limitation. They, they need to tell God, what is it they want? Exactly. I want you right now, take 15 seconds. What do you need immediately? What do you need over the next 12 months for your ministry, your life, your personal life, your children, And they have to express it, tell the Lord. And then you have to speak it out. Nothing happens until you say something. Say to the mountain. You got for the mountain to move. You got to talk to the mountain. You got to say something. So I want you to say right now. Say what? What is it you need? Tell us what is it you need. Speak it out. Now I'm going to come into agreement with you oh, man. that this is going to happen short term and over the next 12 months. Maybe a little longer than 12. Sometimes things happen a little long, but the, but it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Now speak it out. 
Now, Father, I just come into a covenant agreement with that which has come out of the mouth of your people, Amen, Lord. their dream, their vision, their future, their legacy, their posterity. Father, I agree. This is the year of Jubilee. This is the year everything's coming back and more for my friend Benny and for everyone that's watching this program. Now, dear saints, now watch. Whatever you named, whatever you called out, sow a seed that's connected. Say, Pastor, I, I, I need $500,000. Okay, sow a seed with a five in it, 50, 500, 5,000. Well, I need a million, Pastor. Sow a seed with 10. I need five, five in it. Sow a seed with, that's what we with did. Five, that, yeah. Yes, with five. Just sow something to Benny Hinn Ministry, and then together we're going to get testimonies of how God has done. I'm getting testimonies still. From, I get testimonies still from all over so the world. So if someone needs $1 million to pay that, yes. they need to sow what? Sow a seed. Sow a seed for 100 sow a seed for 1000 Sow a seed something for 10000 Something with one connected. Okay, something like connected. this is what I'm believing, so I'm going to sow a seed connected. Kind of a reminder that this is what. I'm, I'm going to sow so this. So if you need $3 million, sow something with 3 300 300 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, yeah. Exactly, exactly. And we're going we're gonna to pray over all of these and... God's going to, God's going to, listen, this isn't gimmicky. If it was, I'd just get up and walk out of here because I'm not in, I'm too, I'm too old. I'm 71. I'm too old for all that yeah. stuff. This stuff, I've been doing this for 20 years. Oral Roberts prophesied it to me. He said, Dick, do this everywhere you go. And this is the first time I've done it on your program, but I've done this. I've done this at Dr. Cho's church. I've done this at some of the biggest churches in South America and Africa and Europe. And it's amazing it's Business amazing. people, yeah. churches, lands. Even Tommy Barnett. You Tommy Barnett prayed for Tommy years ago, years ago uh, out in Tulsa. And, and amazing the things. Kong He, it's amazing the things With the that Dream Center, too, that happened. The, dream, you know, the monies that Tommy said the biggest gift he ever got was 200000 In all those years of ministry. That's, I mean, that's a good gift. Nothing and when, of that. course, but when you prayed. I forgot how many millions came in, in a, a, you know, in not, not too long of a period of time. It's amazing, 12 million or something like that. And Tommy can tell it's us amazing. if I got it wrong, but it's close. Uh, and I remember Oral had me pray for all the trustees. I mean, Brother Copeland and all these. I was kind of embarrassed. I was like, oh my gosh, these are huge ministries. Mm -hmm. But it's a gift that God gave me and I'm releasing it to your partners and your friends that are watching right now. And yeah, you're going to have the greatest it. financial, but you always have to sow a seed. You always, not, nothing happens till somebody says something, somebody sows something. Nothing happens. You got to say it. You got to sow it. You got to pray it. Amen. I said it. You prayed it. Now sow it to Amen. this wonderful ministry, and let's win the world for Christ. Amen. 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 And the number is on the screen right now. Call the number on the screen. You can do it online, or send it in the mail. Post office box sixteen two thousand Irving, Texas, and declare what you believe yes. in God for. Do it now. Mighty days are ahead. Get ready. Mighty days. I'll see you tomorrow. Keep calling. God love you.